Welcome to the Global Investor Podcast, a show that focuses on helping foreign investors enter the lucrative U.S. real estate market. Host Charles Carrillo combines decades of real estate investing experience with a professional background in international banking to interview experts in all areas of U.S. real estate investing. Now, here's your host, Charles Carrillo. Welcome to another episode of the Global Investor Podcast. I'm your host, Charles Carrillo. Today, we have Hugh Odom. Hugh is an attorney and founder of Vertical Consultants, a full-service consulting firm that focuses on cell tower leases. He has secured over $600 million in cell site rents for clients and assisted with over 20,000 cell sites across North America. So thank you so much for being on the show, Hugh. Thanks, Charles. We appreciate the opportunity to be part of your program. Yeah, it's always great to have uh, people come on the show, especially in niches like yours, uh, which is great to add, uh, you know, people with commercial property can add uh, some value and add some cash flow to their bottom line. Yeah, it's something that we work with commercial property all, all across the country. And it's a great source of ancillary revenue for usually for space that's not otherwise being used. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so please tell us a little bit about your background, both personally and professionally before getting involved with your current business. Uh, sure. Well, I, I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee, and now live in Nashville, Tennessee. That's where our home office is. Uh, my background professionally, uh, as you mentioned, my background is being a real estate and telecom attorney for over 20 plus years. I was an attorney inside AT&T uh, for AT&T for almost uh, 11 years and mostly on the Western United States. And then about 11 years ago, we formed Vertical Consultants and uh, have been the president and founder of that ever since. Interesting. And tell us a little bit about what Vertical Consultants does. I was reviewing your website. There's a lot of different services, but just uh, for our listeners, giving them an overview of your services. Sure. We deal with a lot of consulting all across the telecom industry, but we focus on two main areas. First, if a property owner, whether it be a, a commercial property owner or any other type of property owner, gets contacted to put something on the property, whether it be a cell tower, traditional cell tower you see when you're driving down the road, or a rooftop antenna or any other type of equipment, we work with them to negotiate that new lease agreement with like an AT&T, Verizon, or any type, type of cell tower company. Alternatively, we also work with people who have existing agreements in place. We work with them to renegotiate those agreements, not only to increase their revenue, but also protect their, their main asset, that being their property or, and or their building. And in regards to that, our average increase over the last four or five years in existing rents has been over 300% increase in rents immediately. So there's a lot of untapped uh, uh money there that people aren't getting to. That's very interesting. Um, you know, you consult property owners with cell towers already on properties. And I've done something similar with billboards. And we've done them before on sides of buildings. We've done them on individual properties, usually by highways and all that type of stuff. And it adds another uh, another uh, source of income to the property. So if someone says, you know, they have a property and they might uh, talk to you guys, and how does the process work for a property owner that might be interested in additional revenue from a cell tower if they don't have one already? Sure. Well, the process we work with now is if they contact us via our website or phone call or something of that nature, they submit the property to us. And then we work with companies that are looking to build out uh, cell sites across the United States to see if there's a fit. Now, I will say, and we disclose this to everybody who contacts us, you know, just because you have a property, you have 10 properties or 100 properties, it doesn't mean it's going to be a property that's, that's needed by a cell tower company. It just gives you the ability to put it in front of the right people and basically narrow the gap between you and the people that are looking for those cell sites to make sure that if they're looking in that area and your property fits that design of what they're going to build out, that they have the information to, to contact you and, and start the process of negotiation of an agreement. Other than the possibility that uh, their their uh, property does not fit into the requirements of one of those uh, providers that you uh, that you work with or that would rent it, uh, what should own property owners consider when reviewing their property to add a tower? Well, I think the big thing is first of all understand. We always say this with regards to the, there's the financial side of it and the non monetary side of it. The financial side of it is, you're if somebody comes out to you today and says, "Look, I want to use your property for a sell site lease," um, they're going to say, "I'm offering you X." Whatever that number is. You need to understand what you're offering the other side, because mm -hmm. if that's the biggest thing is people don't understand what they're offering the cell tower companies. So don't worry about what you're being offered. Understand what you're offering the other side. Second big thing on the non-monetary side, understand what you're agreeing to. Now, that sounds very simple, but people get so focused on the money, they don't realize that they're leasing out space on a certain portion of the property, but mm -hmm. they're putting restrictions on all their property. So you can have a $50 million property and they're leasing a thousand square feet. And you think, oh, it's just over here in the corner, but you're putting restrictions on the rest of your property, how you can develop that, 
or dispose of it in the future. So be care, be careful of again, you understand the other side, what you're being offered or what you're offering them and understand exactly what you're agreeing to. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So how do these leases look? Are they leasing just to one company? I, I know you had like uh, several companies that would possibly lease uh, a cell tower. And uh, what is a t typical lease term? And uh, how many companies are they typically leasing it to? Well, there's a couple, I'll answer the, the lease term. Lease term usually runs between 20 to 30 years total mm -hmm. term. Uh, and that can be extended on the back end, which some of these things are going to go out for 50, 60, 70 years. They get added on the back end, renegotiated on the back end of that. With regards to the number of companies, if you're leasing out to a cell tower company, usually you're leasing out to one major provider, one major cell tower company. And that cell tower company is in subletting space on that tower and on the ground to carriers like AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile. If you have a building and you have a rooftop space, Usually you can lease out to an AT&T, but you also may be the ability to lease out space to a T-Mobile or Verizon. So it depends on your situation, but ultimately what you wanna make sure of is that whoever you're leasing out to, a cell tower company or to a, or to a wireless provider on your rooftop, you need to understand, again, how to structure that to make sure that you're structuring it to get the rent based on how much value they're getting for your property, not how much space they're using. Interesting. Yeah, that, that makes a huge difference because I could see that someone with a large property and you're only taking a small portion of it. However, right. that could impact future uh, in income from the property or for future development that they might be locked into not being able to develop part of it or it uh, has to be combined into a specific type of uh, project, I guess, if they ever want to uh, utilize more of the property. Oh, definitely. We've had situations all across the country. One st stands out that's recent. Uh, developer out in Las Vegas had a property they paid close to $50 million for, had a sell site agreement out there. And the sell site, the wireless provider said, no, you can't move me where I am. And basically put a monkey wrench in the whole development. And he had $50 million sunk into it and was going to redevelop a hotel property. And he was at the mercy of a, a small little lease in comparison. And so it really is, you need to understand that's where people, people don't look in the details. And I always tell people, don't worry what it means to you on the, when you're negotiating this. Understand what it means to them. Understand how they're going to and try to enforce that agreement. So if you're dealing with an AT&T or Verizon, you need to understand what they think are thinking, not what you're thinking, because that's where people get into some problems down the road. And then they're battling some of the biggest companies in the world. Yeah, I could <laughs> definitely need to have someone on your side. It's, it's funny because just about a week ago, we were reviewing a property in Gainesville and uh, completely vacant property, but it was bringing like 10,000 plus dollars a month just on the cell towers. And the, and you know, the broker just mentions there in like a sentence on oh, and they want to stay there and they want to renew and all this kind of stuff. And now there's so many nuances to it. I mean, who knows what that's being paid, if that's even correct. I mean, there's uh, so much potential possibly for additional income in that. But obviously, the broker was talking about the whole building, wasn't focusing on this fantastic income source that this property already had. Yeah, it's a, a situation by which, you know, we equate the, the telecom industry to the oil and gas industry. And if you need and so it, it's really if you understand, it's kind of like production. If you had if that, if that same property had an oil well back there, you, it's not how much space that oil well takes up, but how many barrels of oil is it producing? Right. Mm -hmm. So and, and not only today, but how many can it produce maybe 10 years from now based upon technology and increase of productivity? So really, again, it's really a, the, the cell tower companies, the wireless providers understand the long term value based upon how much they'll be able to produce and how much they'll be able to pull out of the ground. We tell people that, like people used to think of oil being this, you know, back 100 years ago, this valuable commodity, data is the new oil of the 21st century. We use so much data every day in our cell phone, wireless devices, and all those cell towers are, are data producing machines. Interesting, interesting. So when it comes to uh, equipment and costs, I imagine the cell phone company is paying for permits, construction. Uh, they're taking care of everything after you sign that lease with them. Is that usually how it works? That's exactly correct. They go out and do the construction and they pull the permits. The one thing I'll say on permits for commercial property owners, they need to understand when it's a permit pulled against their property by an AT&T or Verizon or a cell tower company, it's being pulled against them, not against AT&T. So be very, uh, be very careful when you approve a permit application or, or if you don't give over power of attorney to a AT&T Verizon, because then you lose control and you could be a problem because of reclassification of the property, et cetera, down the road with what you could do with the rest of the property. We see so many issues. And then let's say AT&T's contractors violate the permit. 
guess who they're coming to? The municipality is coming to you as a property owner, not to AT&T. So again, one of those things, they pay for all that stuff, but understand you need to still have some oversight over it. Okay. That makes perfect sense. So is there a specific, I mean, obviously every city and town and district's different, but uh, is there a specific zoning that's usually, is this like an I-2? So if I'm in a, it's, if this is, you know, there are certain zoning that this works in and it's usually not in just a multifamily, it's usually in a mixed use uh, type of zoning, like, an, yeah, I guess it's uh, B2, I2. I mean, what do you usually see when you're looking at a property initially? It varies so much with regards mm-hmm. to across the country. And really, you know, most commercial properties, I say the majority of commercial properties will fit with regards to zoning and permitting for a cell tower, most, okay? okay. As again, we have variation with regards to zoning. And then you can start getting into some specialty sites and churches, schools, things like that, and other things. But usually, uh, unless you're a, a multifamily unit, uh, apartment building, things like that, that's a little tricky because of mm-hmm. location, proximity to other housing uh, developments, things of that nature. So it gets a little tricky, but it's mm-hmm. so much particular to, this, to the municipality. Um, the, you know, if, if you're talking to me and we're talking about a property in California, that's totally different from a property in Nevada, yeah. totally different from a property in Ohio with regards to classification and the subsets of that classification as well. Yeah, obviously, once you're getting more into residential, that's when you're going to have more hurdles to right. overcome, I imagine, with uh, with zoning and everybody in, uh, in that community. Or anywhere uh, so, near residential. Or anywhere true. near residential. Yeah. <laughs> so when, you know, we're going all to 5G, and that's been this thing that's been going on with, uh, it, when they're upgrading the equipment, that's all, the company's coming on, they're upgrading it. I imagine they have to put a separate meter for electricity on your property, and it's a, it's a whole process. Is that correct? It is. So when you're seeing upgrades to 5G, yes, you're definitely going to have, you should already have separate meters to dedicate to the utilities. Make sure that they're not pulling uh, electricity or utilities from your building or your property and not not paying you for it. That's number one. But the other thing real quick about 5G and upgrades, if you have a building and you currently are a property and you see upgrades going, going is a perfect opportunity to renegotiate that lease because basically it's a more, it's a more efficient, more productive piece of equipment. They're getting more value from your land. Oh. So it allows you to go back and sometimes go back and renegotiate based upon how your lease is structured. How, how, I mean, how far are these towers usually, if you might know between each other that they have to, to keep a continuous blanket if I'm driving in my car? Well, again, topography and equipment, yeah, and all of but, but let's say in general, let's say between one and one and a half miles apart, depending mm-hmm. on how the, the intersection of the circles mm-hmm. of all the towers. But when you're getting to 5G, right now, there's about a half million cell towers out there, approximately, give or take. Um, 5G, you're going to have to add up to a million new cell sites in the next five mm-hmm. to seven years. So triple what you currently have right now. So that, because 5G, your you're, you're, you're proximity of those towers have to be somewhere between three to 500 feet. OK, so there, so that's really that. So it's becoming to densify the network to allow 5G to work. You have to have more cell sites, which means more opportunities for property owners, et cetera, et cetera. Very interesting. Yeah, it's almost like uh, what you would need for being so f- uh, from your uh, Wi-Fi hotspot at your house or something like that. You know what I mean? Exactly. Uh, that, it's interesting. Yeah, it is. So what mistakes other than we were talking about doing the. Um, you're having the issue, like people knowing the development and uh, permits that are being pulled. What other mistakes do you see property owners make in regards to cell towers and leases that you consult with? Well, the biggest, the biggest mistake we see is I tell people they're, they're playing the wrong game. They're totally, I mean, they can, I tell people it's like a great baseball player trying to play football. Some (laughs) of the skills translate, but if you go out in the field on Sunday, you're going to get killed. You maybe have a little speed, you may be a big guy, but those guys are a lot bigger and they're a lot faster and they just will kill you. So what happens is, especially commercial property owners, they say, hey, I've done leases all the time. I do leases all the time. I do this all the time. And I say, you're playing the wrong game because these are really utility agreements. And I mean that with regards to, you need to think about not what market rents are. There's no such thing as market rents in the telecom industry. Mm-hmm. Every site has its own individual value. You need to think about structure. So if I said to you, Charles, I'm going to give you a lease today for a sell side. I'll give you $3,500 a month, 3% escalator, and I'll, and I'll get 30 year term. He said, well, that seems like a pretty good deal because that's kind of what the real estate market works off of. But, I, but what I've done is I've done exactly what I want to do with a telecom company. What have I done? I've fixed my cost over the next 30 years. I can just run the number $3,500 a month, 3% escalator every year, over 30 years. The maximum I have to pay you is a certain amount, right? But if I keep on adding value on my side and you never see another penny, mm-hmm. you know, now I keep on I keep on getting value and my margins go up. 
So you need to think of utility. Again, as I said before, when you're thinking of this on the financial side, think about not how much space you're leasing, but how much value they're getting from that space and be able to re-enter those agreements based upon certain things happening to reevaluate and renegotiate those. That's from a monetary side. From a non-monetary side, as I mentioned before, really understand what your exposure is with regards to future disposition of the property, future development of the property, liability issues. Don't get yourself in an open-ended, uncapsulated liability situation. What I mean by that, if you do damage to their equipment, you have unlimited liability because if you shut down this tower site for let's say a week or two, they're going to send you a bill for a couple hundred thousand dollars. And if you're collecting a few thousand dollars a month in rent, you see the impact on that. And you may say, well, I have insurance, but do you have insurance for consequential and damages relate to that? So that's where people need to understand this in a bigger picture. Wow. That's uh, that's a lot of things to, to look into. I had a question like on your website, you obviously have all this data. And so is this is this information of people's leases with cell phone towers? Is this public information that you've put together? So you know that if I'm here on Main Street and two miles away, what somebody else is getting for a lease or something like that? Is that the information that you are able to find? So when you're consulting with clients? Well, it's it's a it's 11 plus years of being in business and collecting data over that period of time. Secondly, it's, it's pulling out public records. We can pull out municipal records with regards to municipalities, what they're being paid in certain areas. So it's a lot of accumulation of rents in those areas. But what I'll say again, people contact us and ask us about what people are getting paid. And, and that we kind of like, people want to you know, be served the candy or the dessert. That gets people to have a discussion, but we tell people almost immediately, I don't care what the guy across the street got, got paid or across the country got paid. It really matters about your particular situation. The worst thing you can do is follow what market has done over the years because the, who has been to the best, biggest advantage of that? The cell tower companies. So all you're doing is you're perpetuating the same model. Our deal, I was speaking to a representative today from one of the larger wireless carriers and they said, well, this is how the market works. And I say, we're changing the market. We, we set the market. We're not going to follow the market. We look at each individual site. So you can sit there and you can follow the next guy off the bridge. We want you not to jump off the bridge. We want you to set the market with regards to what your site is getting based upon the value of your one site. So that's it. So your answer mm -hmm. to your question is, yes, we have that data. We use that as a method to show you what other people are getting paid, but not to follow that same example. Interesting. Awesome. Well, that's a lot of great information. Uh, other than uh, carving out this fantastic niche that you and your business have, what are some main factors that have contributed to your success? Well, I think the main factor from day one, I'm, I'm persistent. <laughs> I think persistency has been my key from uh, from an early age to, to right now. But I think the other thing I've learned um, as I got older, uh, don't talk so much and listen more. You, you get a lot more done. And you don't have to be the guy that's talking the most in the room. You just have to guy who says the, the best things in the room and the most pertinent and informational and gets results. So listen, if I were talking to somebody, if I was saying, hey, talk to yourself 25 years ago, and what advice would I give myself 25 years ago? It would be to shut up and just listen. <laughs> so I think be persistent, be observant. And when you're talking to a client, let talk to them about what they want to talk about first. And then try to talk to them about what you want to talk about second. Don't do it the other way around. Oh, that's fantastic. That's uh, fantastic advice. So how can our listeners learn more about you and your business? Well, the easiest way is to go to our website, which is celltowerleaseexperts.com. Again, that's celltowerleaseexperts.com. There's a lot of information about us and contact information, either via email or phones, uh, phone numbers we have on the, on the website. Awesome. So I will uh, look forward to putting all those links into the show notes. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you again. Appreciate the opportunity. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you. Hi, guys. It's Charles from the Global Investors Podcast. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you're interested in getting involved with real estate, but you don't know where to begin, set up a free 30-minute strategy call with me at ScheduleCharles.com. That's ScheduleCharles.com. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Global Investor Podcast. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe on iTunes or Google Play to get new weekly episodes. For more resources and to receive our newsletter, please visit globalinvestorpodcast.com. And don't forget to join us next week for another episode. 
Nothing in this episode should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Any investment opportunities mentioned on this podcast are limited to accredited investors. Any investments will only be made with proper disclosure, subscription documentation, and are subject to all applicable laws. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of Syndication Superstars, LLC, exclusively.